Okay, so today we're going to go through exercise 106, which is the second day of post-processing photos in, uh, in Photoshop. And we're going to discuss uh, a little piece of magic that's in Photoshop, but it's also in the other Adobe products. So just because we're talking about it in Photoshop today, remember in the back of your mind that blending modes exist if you're in InDesign or an Illustrator, because you'll still use them for those software packages as well. Uh, but what we're going to talk about, and we're going to devote a whole day to talking about, is this concept of blending modes and what do they do and why would we want to use them. Uh, I would say it's probably the mo one of the most powerful tools that's in Photoshop, especially for architects and how we collage things together. Uh, I use it on a very regular basis outside of class um, to, as I'm working through collages and stuff. Um, so it's, it's the kind of thing that will be reinforced over time and assuming that you learn it and learn it well, I promise you, you will keep using it. Um, because it's, it's, again, one of the best things that you can use in Photoshop. So um, when you open Photoshop today, I do want you to make sure that you open Photoshop CS6. And it should be listed, but if it's not listed here, uh, it could be under All Programs. And then you have to look at the Design Standard CS6, not CS3, um, because we want to make sure we're working in CS6. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to ask you all to do is I've prepared a sample file for you to work with. And so if you go to the exercise 106 uh, on, the, on the digital tools site, you want to download this uh, Photoshop blending modes.psd file because it will give you a sample that will match up with exactly what I'm doing so you can kind of do it as I do it um, and, and I work through it. I recognize some of you are still waiting for those computers. Uh, mm -hmm. can't, can't help you. <laughs> Hopefully they'll come online um, fairly soon. If you want to try to jump to a different one, you could try that. Uh, for now. So um, you want to make sure you right click on this and say save link as and save it as a PSD file. I already have it on my flash drive so I'm not going to download it right now and then I'm going to go ahead and go to open and open it up here. And when you open it up you'll get something that looks a lot like this. Now. On the uh, course website, the blending modes tutorial, which is Photoshop 1.9, if I'm not mistaken. Nope, it's not 1.9. It is not listed here. How about that? It's 1.11, I think. Hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll make that correction. I swear it was here. Huh, I must be just missing the, the menu structure for it. I apologize. I wonder if it's listed here. Maybe it is listed. Oh yeah, there, there, my bad. It is listed, Photoshop 1.24 blending mode. Um, this has a video that walks through this exact same thing, so if you get lost or whatever, you can come back and, and go through it. Uh, in a little bit more detail. But again, I use the same sample file because I think it's really helpful to have something scripted before you start using blending modes just so you can kind of experiment with what happens uh, with the blending mode. So I have this file open. Uh, there are four layers that have been created. We're going to start using just layer one and the background layer um, as, you, as you learn this. Then we'll move on to layers two and three because I want to show you some additional stuff that this does. Uh, but for right now, we have two layers. The first one is a blank kind of bluish color. And I made this so you could see what happens to the blue when you apply the blending mode. And then on top of it, I have a couple uh, colors laid out. I have white, I have a 50% gray, and I have what's supposed to be black. It's not actually black, it's really, really dark gray. I made a mistake when I made it. Um, and if you look at the screen, you can tell it's kind of a really dark gray instead. Uh, and then I also have a gradient that goes from black to white. Uh, and this exists on its own layer on top of the blue um, so that these squares are on top. Blending modes require two layers and you're going to apply the blending mode to the layer that's on top of the layer below. It. And so in this instance, I'm going to click on layer one here and you can see how it's highlighted in kind of that light blue color. And that's what I'm going to apply the blending mode to. The background layer here is just going to exist. I'm not going to do anything special to that. Okay. So, blending modes are hidden up here. Right now it says normal, and you could probably see a little drop down menu that says normal. 
Um, that is the default Photoshop mode. Chances are they will all be normal unless you're, you're changing and trying to do something special with it. Um, you already, last class, used the blending mode. You just didn't realize you used it. When you did the dodge and burn, I said blending mode overlay and you changed the little checkbox. Technically, that was the blending mode. But anyway, for right now, I'm going to change the blending mode here. And when I do, when I click on normal, I get a bunch of options. And you can see that there's a bunch of options here. We're not going to go through every one, but we're going to pick one from each of these uh, regions. And, and we'll go through them. The first set of region, the first region here, all of these, darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn, and darken color, all have to do with darkening the image. Okay. The next set, lighten screen, color dodge, linear dodge, and lighten color, uh, are all dealing with lightening the image. Right. The third set here, darkens the darks and lightens the lights. Okay. Uh, the last set here, or the last two sets, are kind of specialty ones. We'll cover luminosity. Um, and subtract and stuff. Um, these are they're less common, so we're going to focus on the dark, the light, and the the darkening and lightening. So the first one I'm going to pick I is multiply. And when I click on multiply, we see something happens to these squares. Okay. So what multiply does is it says on the image that's on top, anything that is darker than the layer below it, I want you to make darker. Anything that is about the same, I want you to make it about the same transparency. And anything that is lighter, I want you to make it go away completely. Okay? So in this instance, we had, let me switch to just an arrow here, we had white in this square. White is lighter than the blue background, therefore, with a multiply blending mode, the white goes away entirely. So no white left, becomes transparent. Something that's in the middle here, the 50% gray, when the blending mode is applied, becomes semi-transparent. And so we're making it a little bit darker, right? White being completely transparent. This one is a kind of a medium transparency. And then when we get to the dark, the black, right? It takes the blue and doesn't change the blue into black. It makes it a really, really dark blue. So it's still changing the blue, okay, uh, as it shines through. Now, if we switch the blending mode, and the only real way of doing this is for you to practice. That's why we have this file, so you can see what happens. Okay? If we switch from multiply, and we go down to screen mode, for example, the opposite is going to happen. Okay? So the lights are going to stay really light. So in this case, the white, which is the lightest color, right? if I turn the background off, that's going to stay the nice bright white. There it is. The middle is going to let a little bit of the blue shine through, so we get a little bit of the blue shining through the white. Okay? And then if this were true black, which it's not, this would be exactly the blue of the background. Okay? So the dark becomes transparent. The middle is still 50% gray, and the light is 100% opaque. Okay? So that's with screen mode. And we can play around with some of the others. Uh, in this, if, for example, lighten is very close to, but it, it, it does a slightly different thing. Right? We get the gray shining through instead of it being somewhat transparent. Uh, but again, the black is going almost, almost entirely gone, and the white is 100% opaque. So as you play through these, you know, color dodge, again, something slightly different. Right? Uh, so each one of these blending modes is lightening the image but it's doing slightly different things. So you can play around with what those actually do, uh, but we're going to concentrate on kind of a few basics, which are multiply screen. And then we'll get to the last one, which is overlay. And overlay uh, does kind of the hybrid of the two. So anything that's lighter in the image gets lighter. Anything that's darker in the image that's on top gets darker. And anything that's neutral value stays the same. So we're darkening the darks and lightening the lights but we're not changing the midtones of the image. Okay? So, and likewise, we could play around with a few of the other options, right? You could go to soft light and you get, again, slightly different options. You could get hard light and you get, again, slightly different options. The point being that you can really play around with these uh, and get subtle changes. So you're saying, great, you've showed me how to lighten the lights, darken the darks, but why does that really matter? Okay? I'm going to show you a couple things today. The first thing that I'm going to show you is a preview of why this matters in the world of architecture uh, and collage work. And then I'll show you how this works on photographs and processing photographs. Okay? 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off layer 1 altogether. Remember, I still have this blue background. And I'm going to turn on layer 2. Layer 2 is a quick line drawing that I exported out of SketchUp. Uh, nothing particularly fancy, doesn't matter what the content is, it's just a line drawing. Uh, and the line drawing is a black line drawing on a white background. Okay, so it's a JPEG, there's no transparency, whatever. If you've ever worked in the architectural realm before, you may find that you want to collage in a sky in the background or, or what have you. And you may have taken an image like this and said, oh, I need to make the background transparent. Let me go ahead and use the magic wand tool and I'll select the background. Oops, hold on. And I'll select the background here. All right, let me press the delete key and it's become somewhat transparent. Right? Might look somewhat familiar right, to the non-Photoshop people. Truth is, that's way too much work. Right? If instead of that, we take this and we change the blending mode, we can make the background transparent. So you remember the first one that I picked, the multiply, right? What did it do? It got rid of anything that was white and made anything that was black darker. So if I switch this blending mode to multiply, I can effectively get rid of all of the white that was on the, the page and make this just a line drawing. Works really conveniently, okay? Likewise, we could play around with some of the other options. Darken, for example, we get a little bit less of it. Right, color burn darkens it up a little bit more, but the lines become more blue than they do black. Right, so each of these changes the, the effect. You don't see much on darker color. And linear burn, you get a little bit, right? But in reality, multiply is almost always the common choice here. Okay, if, right, I switch to um, screen mode, right, what it does is it keeps the white white, but it lets anything that's black be transparent, so I get a bunch of the blue lines shining through. Okay, so I've effectively switched my black lines to be blue lines just by doing this. So if you wanted a blue line drawing, for example, you could do it that way. Okay, if we go to multiply, or excuse me, overlay mode, we get kind of a hybrid of both. The, the blue becomes lighter than it was before, and the lines become a little bit darker blue. Not the best results. So the truth is, on a white background, black line drawing, chances are you're going to use the multiply um, selection to let that shine through. Obviously, in this particular circumstance, I have a blue background. You probably wouldn't pick a blue background. You'd pick something else, um, even if it was several Photoshop uh, or several SketchUp exports together. You might layer them up with a, with a multiply blending mode and allow those to work together as a, as a set rather than a single image. We'll cover that when we get to the assemblies later on in the course. Uh, so I just want to show you the idea that you can have a black and white image and make the white part go away without having to select and delete the white part of the image. Okay? Likewise, we can flip and use an example that's black on white. Right? This is just an inverse of the, the image before, white lines on a black background. In this context, if I change the blending mode, what would I want to pick? Probably screen, one of these lighten categories, right? which would cause my white lines to stay solid and my blue background to shine through. Okay, so I took something that was uh, a black and white image, sorry, black and white image, and I made it so that the blue background shines through. Again, if I picked multiply on this, we'd get a little bit of the blue line shining through, but it's really hard to see anything happening. Okay, and if I picked overlay mode, kind of a hybrid of the two, but it's not that great of a result. So in reality, you're going to be looking at, if it's a dark background with a white I lines, you're going to be looking at screen mode. <coughs> if you're a white background with dark lines, you're going to be looking at multiply in all likelihood. Okay? So that's how you would use it in an architectural context. Now let's move on and sh kind of play around with this in a photographic context. And so when I do this post-processing, I'm going to pick an old image. I'm going to deliberately pick an old image. Uh, and you could do this if we use Creative Commons search, it's always nice because then we're picking an image that we have license to play around with. Um, and so it's search.creativecommons.org. And this is a great place to find basically free to use images. Uh, and so you might type in something like old faded photo. And I'm searching Flickr right now. You can choose to fix a search in something else. And when I hit enter, we'll see what comes up. Right, that one's not too bad.
Yeah, something like this one probably would be a good one to play around with. So let me go ahead and save this image as, and I'll save it to my flash drive. Oops. I have to click on the download link here. Let me see, view the original size, there we go. And let me go ahead and show it right there. And copy it, put it onto my flash drive. Face. Now I have a variety of other old photo examples so I'll probably do this to a couple different images so you can see it happen. So let's go ahead and let's open that photo that I just downloaded. I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'll pick the... What? So I have the image, for some reason it didn't want to open for me. Um, let me go ahead and do a quick crop of this so that it's just the image itself. All right, and I'll press control zero so I can see the whole thing. All right, it's not the highest quality image in the world, but it's certainly something that we can work with for now. Um, now, if I look here, I have the image itself, right? And I have a background layer. But I need two versions of the image because if I'm applying a blending mode, I need to apply the blending mode to the topmost. So I'm going to right click uh, on the layer itself and I'm going to say duplicate layer. So I have two versions of the same there and there. And then I'm going to take the, the layer that's on top and I'm going to apply a blending mode to it. So let's go to multiply first. And so multiply, what it does is it darkens the darks. So if we look at her dress here, it's still going to stay very white, except that all the little shadows are going to get darker. All the background of the image is going to get darker. So if I turn that on, we see that it really dramatically changes that image. Okay. Likewise, if I were to take this and switch to screen mode, right, it's going to lighten up the light parts of the image. And in this particular image, there really isn't a lot that I'm worried about lightening because it's already pretty. The 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 white parts are already pretty white. Um, but I'll open up another one that we can we can show what the screen mode does. Let me go ahead and go to file open. <sighs> Let me see my thumbnails. I want to pick a specific one here. Really cool. <clears throat> Here's another example here. Okay, so in this context, there's there's some shadowing in the trees here that I wouldn't mind lightening up a little bit. So again, I have a background layer. I need two copies. So I'm going to right click and say duplicate layer. And I could rename the layer if I want, but for right now, I don't need to. I'm going to make sure I select that layer and I'm going to switch the mode here to screen. And we see that when I switch to screen, we get a lot more detail out of kind of the shadows in here. So that's what it was before. Right? That's what it was after. So we're getting a lot of details. But obviously, the sky is negatively impacted, right? which is a problem. So I like what it's doing to the trees, but I don't like what it's doing to the sky. The truth is that the opposite, if I went to multiply, would probably help the sky out quite nicely, but make this much too dark. Okay? So what if, right? instead of doing multiply or screen, we came down here to overlay and did both? Right? So we get a combination. right? Uh, in this context, we're seeing a little bit more in here. We're seeing a little bit more in there. It's not a bad uh, combination of the two. The other thing that you can do is adjust the opacity of that blending mode to control how much is applied. All right, so you can see how much of it's applied. If we come back here to this original photo, uh, and we switched this into overlay. Right, we're getting a little bit of both. You can see it there. In this context, I think probably the best would be multiply, um, because I think it's a little bit better to darken it up like that. 
Uh, so you're going to have to read on each one of these photos which one really works nicely. Let me go ahead and open another one as an example. Right. Here's another one as an example. Um, again, I have to right click on background and say layer from back. Oh, excuse me. Duplicate layer. There it is. And now we'll go through the blending modes once again. So if I do multiply, it's going to darken the image. If I do um, screen mode, it's going to lighten the image. And if I do overlay, it's going to do a little bit of both. And generally, that's the best result. Right? And you can see what it was, what it is now. Okay? So you're going you're gonna to go through today, and you're going to do uh, a multiply, a screen, and an overlay. And then we're going to move on and do something called a luminosity adjustment. Uh, and the luminosity adjustment, you're not going to want to use an old image. You're going to want to use a newer image that has a lot of color saturation in it, a lot of reds and a lot of blues. So I'm going to go ahead and open another image. And I'm going to pick one of these sunset images. I'm trying to get the one without the... There we go. There it is. And I want to do a luminosity adjustment to this. So uh, what I'm going to do, and it's, it's written out on your sheet here, uh, is the first thing I'm going to do is create a new curves adjustment layer. So I'm going to go up to um, layer, new adjustment layer, and I'll go to curves. This is something that you did last class, so it's review. And I'm going to do a slight S curve. So I'm going to put a point in the middle, and then I'm going to drag this down a bit and this up a little bit about like that. Okay. Once that's done, right, I'm going to come back to my curves layer, which we can see it change. You might be able to see it a little bit on the screen. And I'm going to change the blending mode of this to be something called luminosity, which is way down here at the bottom. Okay. And the luminosity is probably not something that you're going to see too much on the screen, but it's a very subtle difference in, in kind of enhancing the values. And it, it does, on your screen when you see it, make a big difference in kind of the overall saturation of the blues and of the, the reds uh, in the sunset. Uh, you get a little bit more reflection off the water and, and that sort of thing. So that's a luminosity uh, adjustment layer. So you'll go through and you'll do that. The other thing that's very common uh, is a lot of times you want to put some kind of a, a texture behind an image. Uh, you'll want to make it look a little bit um, older or dirtier or something uh, to change the look of the image. And that's something that's really easily done with the same strategy uh, of a blending mode. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my Creative Commons image search. And I'm going to search for a grunge texture. Uh, and you can do an image search, a Google image search. You could search Flickr and we can see what comes up. Okay, and we get a lot of pictures like this, dirt kind of thing. Uh, but it can, can be a good enhancement for the, the particular image. So you pick something uh, that looks good to you, right? maybe something like this, uh, and then you'll go ahead and you'll download it. Download the original here. Show it in the folder. There it is. I'm going to copy it, uh, and then I'll put it over in my flash drive here. Now, on my flash drive, I have a resources folder, and inside of my resources folder, I have something called grunge textures. And this is something that I, I keep because I use a lot of these, right? And so I have a variety of them. Uh, let's see if we can see some previews here, right, that I've, I've collected over time, right, depending on, on, on the look that I'm going for, because these are good background things to have. Um, some of these concrete ones are pretty good. Right. Those are not bad. Uh, I have some paper ones if you wanted it to look as though it were on paper. Uh, and all these you can find. I just happen to have saved them over time. Um, so you can see there's ones with ink spilled on them. There's ones that just have kind of a background paper. This one has a little bit of crinkle in it, uh, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll save this. I'm going to save my image into here for now. I'll drop it in like that. And then I'll go back to Photoshop. And we'll work with, with this, this same image. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and I'll go to File and then Place as a way of bringing this in. 
and I'll go to my flash drive and I'm going to pick one of those grunge textures and I'll pick the one that I just downloaded here and I'll go ahead and say place and there it is so right now this is way too small to be really useful so I need to adjust the uh, the size of this now because it's a background I don't really care if it stretches right but I would like to point out if you want it to stay in proportion you have to hold down shift as you drag it okay but for right now I don't really care so I'll make it a little bit bigger than my overall image okay and I'll say okay with this little check mark when I'm done okay so now I have this I'm going to work with this the same way that I did with all the rest of the blending modes in that I'm going to apply the blending mode to this layer so that I can see the grunge texture itself okay so let's switch first uh, to a multiply right and we can see that 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 grunginess is is shining through now this is probably way too much uh, so I'll probably want to adjust the opacity down so I have just a little bit of that grain showing through uh, in the background we can also switch to a lighten right which changes it again it, it makes the, the texture show through a little bit more uh, in this region of the photo I could also switch to an overlay mode and I get a little bit of both shining through and I also may find that I really don't like the texture and I'd really like to use a different texture so let's go ahead and place another one in so I'll go to file and then place uh, and let me go to one of the paper ones Let me look at the thumbnails here so I can pick which one. Let's pick that one. Place. Uh, and then once again, I'm going to make this bigger. So we drag it a little bit bigger. Something like that. And we'll switch this first to be multiply. That's a little bit strong, but you can see the wrinkles showing up there in the corner. Let's try screen mode. Definitely not right try a little bit of overlay and see what happens mm, too much let's go back to multiply that's good might try darken yeah that's not quite enough go multiply and then we'll drop the opacity down so you have just a little bit of dirt in the background so I wanted you to show you guys how to do that uh, it's not necessary for your assignment which by the way is due on Wednesday but this is the kind of thing uh, especially when we get into some of the uh, illustrator drawings where you don't want a true crisp color, you want a little bit of texture to it. Uh, let's say I was trying to do uh, a quick collage of a building that had some siding on it or something. I might use one of these kind of textures just to roughen it up and change it so that it's not just a uniform color. Uh, but you can certainly do it in, in photos and since we're working with blending modes, it's a good time to practice. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a total of nine images today. Uh, and you're going to oh look I just ma I made a mistake on this uh, you're going to create nine images you're going to post them all in gallery format just like you did last class okay um, I have the, the review there just trying to think if there's anything else no I think that's it okay so if you didn't get a chance to post your 18 images from last class make sure you posted them today also make sure you write comments right three comments for today three comments for yesterday right good time to practice that as well Are there any questions about blending modes in Photoshop no okay I'm gonna turn you loose uh, and if you have questions by all means uh, let me know